G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Sunday evening here in Australia and as we can see, the markets have stalled a little bit now. So Bitcoin's just kind of hanging around that $11,300, $11,400 range and it really hasn't broken through it and really hasn't gone too far below it. I saw it around $11,290 something dollars, but roughly sort of that $11,300 range. We can see the market caps come down a little bit, but we're up above that $360 billion mark, so that's good. Now we've just got to wait and see what's going to happen. Now the reason I say is this is where our price is at the moment. So obviously we broke, broke out of this real short uh, trend line, so we can get rid of this. This is now invalid. And we've broken out of this trend line as well. We've gone well above it. I'll just leave it for now because I am waiting to see if we're going to come back and bounce off this. And there's a reason for this. Because we've had such a big pump over the weekend and it's continued through Saturday and Sunday, Friday not so bad, but Saturday and Sunday, and we'll have to wait to see what Sunday does on its complete. Here is the Bitcoin futures. So Bitcoin futures is stuck at $11,110. It hasn't accounted for Saturday and Sunday. It only does Monday to Friday. So there is going to be a gap and we're going to have to wait and see whether that's going to be filled. Remember, we still have that gap back down here at sort of $9,000, sort of $600 level. I don't think that's going to come back and be filled anytime soon. Just my personal opinion, not financial advice. I think we're going to keep moving up from here. But $11,100, let's just round it off, you know, $10 difference, $11,100. But we're currently sitting at $11,300. Uh, sort of so that means we've got to fall back down to around about here to cover that gap. So that basically comes and retests this line pretty much. So I am waiting to see what happens over the next few days. Now, look, this could just pump uh, tomorrow. So Monday morning, everyone gets in uh, in the traditional finance markets. They've seen this pump and they're like, let's get on it and they buy some more. So this could skyrocket again and we could quickly claim that $12,000 level and quickly test that $12,500 level. That absolutely could happen. Or we come back down, it sells off a little bit, and we close that gap at the moment, which again is about $11,110. So this is what I'm looking for, that we might uh, have a bit of a pullback tomorrow and come and close this level. Or we have a pretty good pump up to around twelve, maybe even $12,500. And then at some stage, we're going to get a sell-off and we're going to come back and close this $11,100 mark. We'll have to wait and see. I'm keeping my eye out. I'm not really sure which way it's going to go. I do think there's uh, some momentum behind this. But this is one, two, three, four, five days in a row of green candles. We generally don't have too many green days in a row without having a red day. So tomorrow might be the day where it pulls back a little bit. And again, I'd be looking for it to close, which is around about sort of here, 11,100, and there we go. Around about there, $11,110 thereabouts uh, is you know what I'd be looking for. But who knows, we'll wait and see. Now there's generally not a lot of uh, crypto news over the weekends, but I did find uh, a couple. So this one, Yearn Finance gains 36% as, to as DeFi tokens follow Bitcoin's bull trend. So when Bitcoin started to move, a number of the altcoins moved. Now they haven't uh, gone you know, crazy or anything like that, but there has been some decent pullbacks, uh, some decent, uh, yeah, I guess, no, pullbacks going the other way. So, you know, they've made up for some of the losses. Now, not a whole lot, but at least some of them. And the DeFi tokens, again, I spoke about this the other day, they may a pretty, be a pretty good buy at the moment. This may be the, you know, the dip that, uh, you know, to get you into DeFi if that was your thing. Make your own decisions. It's not financial advice. Uh, I nearly pulled the button uh, on buying some more, but they pumped instead of uh, went down further. So now I'm just waiting to see what happens tomorrow. And if they pump, well, I missed it. And if they do retrace, particularly Bitcoin, comes down and closes that $11,100 mark, I'll probably get in and I'll buy a couple uh, more of the DeFi coins that I really like. I'm interested in getting into Uniswap, so I might get some of those and I'll probably put some more into Aave uh, and Synthetix Network, possibly Carver as well. We'll have to wait and see. 
Now what we can do is we can go over here and we can have a look at DeFi. So as we can see, Chainlink, it's back up 13% after the last seven days, which is good. But we can see Synthetics Network, it's still down over seven days, so that's why I'm looking at it. But these could roll over. So that's what I'm waiting for. If there's a pullback from Bitcoin, and it maybe even drops down lower than the uh, CME gap that's going to be caused this weekend, I'll be looking for these. And again, I think it's around about $5 something in Australian. So I'll be looking for around about the low uh, $5 mark uh, for synthetics in Australian dollars. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Uh, in the US dollar, I'm going to say it's probably around about nearly $4 uh, sort of flat thereabouts, maybe even a little bit lower, three dollars ninety-ish. Uh, so as we can see, some you know some have made some really big comebacks. So it's up ten percent in seven days for Uma. They took a pretty big hit. It's still down, you know, twenty uh, eleven percent in the last twenty four hours though. So DeFi hasn't quite done as well as BTC, but we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. Another good story I found. So the SEC's conservative approach to crypto needs to change. This is what the SEC's Pierce says. So crypto mum Hester Pierce admits the, CE, the SEC can be slow in giving guidance, but she sees the regulator, regulator becoming more open to change. And this is what we need. We need more people like this in the space who understand crypto and can see you know, where it could go. No guarantees it does go there, although it's looking pretty promising in the moment, and I've put my money where my mouth is. I believe crypto is going to be uh, big, and blockchain in general is going to be massive. So again, I've you know put my money where my mouth is, but we need people like this, people in high places to help push uh, the narrative forward. So Hester Pierce, Commissioner for the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, affectionately known as Crypto Mum, says the regulator's more conservative attitude around crypto needs to change as people become more interested in the space. In a recent interview with Cointelegraph, Pierce said the crypto landscape is changing quickly. While we've been very slow in giving guidance, there is more and more interest from a wide spectrum of people, both inside the crypto space as well as inside the traditional financial institutions who are asking us for guidance. So I think we're going to be forced to uh, confront that more and more in the coming years. The coming years part worries me a little bit. You know, obviously, you know, there's going to be regulation that will continue, but I don't think we should be waiting years and years to really get into it. And I don't think that's probably what was meant, but it's just the way it sounded, you know, in the coming years, I think we probably need more regulation now. Not over-regulated though. She added, crypto is a space where there will be continued interest from a larger percentage of the population. With this in mind, Pierce wanted to come back for a full term at the SEC to help the regulator become more open towards innovation. The financial sector has been innovative, um, defunct for a long time. There's not been a lot of innovation uh, in the finance world for a long, long time. So this is what they need, particularly banks and things like that. They've been very adverse to any innovation. She admits the SEC tends to be more conservative in approach, like banks. Uh, and, you know, they all sort of go hand in hand. She said she hopes the commission can be friendlier to innovators and be able to provide the guidance needed to help them move forward with innovation and entrepreneurship. Pierce stated her second term as SEC Commissioner, Pierce started, sorry, her second term as SEC Commissioner in August. The position she took was vacant, uh, she took over was vacant from 2015 until she was appointed in January 2018, abridging her first term. Her second term will last until 2025. So it's good to know that we have her until 2025 and that she's open to you know, entrepreneurship, innovation and things like that, basically change. That is what we need to get this, uh, this, you know, space to become the future. When it comes to DeFi, Pierce said that it's a more complicated space. She noted smart contracts, as they're designed with DeFi, act in a sort of regulatory role. So agencies like the SEC are discussing where they best fit in that environment. We need to be thinking about what we can bring to uh, to that as a regulator, where it is important for us to play a role. And that's a con uh, conversation that only we and the SEC need to be having. But as DeFi develops, society needs to be thinking about those kind of questions too. And Congress need to be thinking about those kind of questions so that we can get uh, from them directives on how they want us to handle uh, some of these things. 
So I really like what she's saying, uh, and there's a YouTube uh, video with that if you want to go and have a look at it, and it's even here on Coin Telegraph's uh, page. So have a look at that. But last but not least, so the top uh, public companies that have uh, adopted Bitcoin as a reserve asset. So I won't go through the whole story, but they have a little chart here, and it's interesting to see that you know MicroStrategy. They've got 38,000 Bitcoin, Digital Galaxy Holdings, they've got 16,000, Square Inc, so Cash App, they have 4,000. So these are some of the ones that people really know, but we can go over to here and have a look at some of the real big dogs. So Grayscale, whew, nearly half a billion Bitcoin, oh sorry, uh, so 449,000. Yeah, not half a billion. There's not that many Bitcoin. There's only 21 million. 449,000 Bitcoin though. Uh, so 2.1% of all Bitcoin. That's not too bad. Uh, CoinShares, XEB provider, 69,000. And then you can see the Bitcoin fund. I've got 8,000. And I think that's another Bitcoin fund. I've got 5,000. So they are the big public uh, traded companies. And again, there's other other ones over here. Crypto... Uh, Punk Cipher, sorry, crypto Cypherpunk Holdings, only two hundred and four BTC, which is really not that much in the grand scheme of things. But Argo Blockchain, one hundred and twenty six. You know, I'm sure people like uh, Pomp. He's probably got a few. Obvious Chamath. You know, there's rumours that he may have a million Bitcoin. You know, whether he's got a million of them or bought a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, I'm not really sure. But I know he'd have a lot. And he's probably got, you know, at least a thousand, if not, you know, tens of thousands. Tim Draper as well, probably have a few. And there'd be a number of people out there. You know, Tone Vase, I'm going to say he's probably got a number of them as well. So interesting to see, you know, how many Bitcoins people have. Uh, well, not so much people, but these companies have. And I, I think this is going to continue to grow. I, I think there's going to be more and more companies that come in. I think the micro strategy uh, way of investing in Bitcoin as to not pump the price up massively is still in play right now. I think that is why we're not going to see Bitcoin come down too much. I think this trajectory that it's following, and we can just use this trend line, uh, it's not going to be broken anytime soon. I think we may pump up fairly high from it, but when they, then we'll come back down and sort of tress, test this line at times. But I don't think we're going to go below it. I think more and more companies, especially, uh, we've spoken about this before, this breaks 12,500. There's going to be people start to, not people, people are already buying in, but there's going to be companies starting to go, hey, this this is sounding really promising because they're still skeptical at the moment. They still don't believe this is that greater trend line, the bear market that we've been through for quite a while. This could, in you know their eyes, just roll over and go back down and it could have been a massive fake out. But once we cover off that 12,500, it's not much to get to that sort of $14,000 mark. And particularly once we hit that $14,000 mark and break through it, if we get a big rejection from $14,000 and come back down to this kind of $12,000 level, uh, you know, it, it'll really, it won't slow things down majorly, but it will put people off. Watch big businesses to get in once Bitcoin breaks this $14,000, sort of $800, $900 mark. When that gets broken, Bitcoin is absolutely going to skyrocket. It is going to come and cover off that 20,000 quickly. I think it's going to take a bit to get to 12,500. Uh, we're probably going to reject off it fairly sh shortly and come back down. But then we're going to push up and we're quickly going to get to 14,000. And once we go through that, I think there will be very little resistance at 20,000. I think we just absolutely skyrocket through. I think that happens later in sort of November, uh, December. I don't think it'll happen early November, but I definitely think sometime in December this year, we're going to test that 20,000. And if it's not, then it'll be in the early part of next year. Again, it's really, we've got to break this bit here. Once we get through 14,000, round it off to thereabouts, you know, big companies and things like that are going to pile in because they're going to go, rightio, this is well and truly broken out of its downtrend and it is covered off on, you know, some previous uh, sort of resistance. And again, it's basically free air to there and then what happens after that. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on the market. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think this trend line is going to hold for quite some time? 
Now it's still a kind of shorter time, shorter time frame trend line, but I think the micro strategy uh, strategy of purchasing Bitcoin is in play. And I don't think this is gonna be broken at any time. I think there is gonna possibly be some big pumps, but then we'll come back down and we'll test this line. And I will pull this line out further uh, in the future to see if it holds. That's just my personal opinion though. I'd love to know if you think that's what's going to happen. Please hit the like button down below. It really helps with the algorithm to get my video seen. Press subscribe, hit that bell alert down below so you get uh, updates of when I'm uploading. I upload pretty much daily. There's not too often that I don't upload, but there you know, are occasions sometimes where work and life may just get in the way, but there hasn't been too many occasions like that. I've been updating daily for uh, quite some time. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that gain train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.